I'm here at Queen of Heaven Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois, and I'm at a place that could be called the Shrine of the Holy Innocents. And it is this location that marks the sad story of one of the worst disasters that happened in Chicago. It was Our Lady of Angels Fire, the school fire, that killed 92 children and three teachers who were nuns. And this is the memorial to that event. And you can see here, laid to rest are many of these children. It is December 3rd, 62 years after this event. And still you can see the pain and memory of those lost. Here we have Margaret Ann Sansonetti. They have a marker here with all of the names. It's a beautiful place. So many names. It's hard to even imagine. I'm going to tell the story of what happened. We're going to actually head over right now to um, St. Adelbert Cemetery in Niles, and this is where there was a picture of a uh, famous picture in Life magazine of a boy that was being carried out by a fireman. So we're going to go visit him, and uh, I'll tell the story. Hey there, everybody. It's good to see you back again. I'm here uh, today. I'm going to be visiting the grave of a little boy that was killed back in 1958. It was December 1st of 1958 that uh, he was killed along with uh, 91 others in his school, classmates plus three of his teachers, which were nuns. So let's go, uh, let's see if we can go find them. Uh, very interesting carving here of this man. Uh, R.W. Nicholas. So let's talk about it. The, uh, like I said, it was December 1st, 1958, and uh, it was uh, a young boy from the school. Now, this is allegedly because I'm going to skip forward a little and tell you that uh, later in life this man confessed, but some people, many people think it's an attention-getting thing morbid as that would be that uh, he would confess but he uh, said that he started the fire because um, he was mad at his mom for something and uh, he uh, it, it is known this is corroborated that the fire did start in the basement it was a, a cardboard waste barrel <laughs> And it was just before it was just before the uh, the release of the kids. I think it was 20 minutes, a half hour before. Say it was uh, two o'clock to 2:20 p.m. This started. This thing started to uh, really heat up. Threw a cigarette in there. Now there were 1,600 kids enrolled at the school at the time. And uh, I'm not sure how many 
were there, but it was kindergarten through eighth grade. And uh, of course, as that started to accelerate, the, uh, the smoke started filling the hallways. There were three little girls that were in the uh, corridor coming back from running errands. They were the first ones to notice the smoke in the corridor and sounding the, uh, the verbal alarm. Janet Delaria, Francis Gazaldo, and uh, Karen Hobick. And sadly, Janet Delaria was the only one of the three to end up surviving in the aftermath of all this. Finally, the bells were rung. A teacher had at first pulled the alarm and it didn't ring. And uh, sticking with it, uh, finally got the, the alarm to ring and the, the, the students were confused and the teachers, teachers were all nuns. Uh, looking for the principal. The principal was in one of the classes helping out because I think one of the teachers, he was substituting in, one of the teachers was out. And uh, so there was a lot of delay in action taking place. Basically the, the MO was to just wait it out and, uh, you know, seconds turned into minutes. Um, oh, look at this. This, is, this looks very interesting. It's a veteran. Young man. It's tough to read. Maybe on the video camera. 1874, 1928, 1880, 1900. So, you know, chaos started. Now, most of the kids were trapped on the, uh, the second floor their teachers. Now, and the second floor was like a third floor because there was a a raised basement so it was almost three stories up what's sad is you know panic these little tiny ones the littlest ones they had their little spot at the window imagine the smoke pouring out it was about to flash everyone struggling for air and panicking and the older ones were pulling the little ones and they were falling to the floor and uh, Anyway, it's understandable. Then sadly, the, uh, the heat was so great in the corridor, there was a flash. And uh, once it reaches a critical point, you know, the fire really, everything just started exploding. Joseph Kalazuska. Kalazuska going back to uh, 1862 he was born 1910 with his wife here Mariana well one of the rooms uh, the sister she had forgot her keys to the emergency door which connected to the fire escape and it was locked from the inside. So sad. And they were trapped there. It was room 207. And it was Sister Geraldita Enos. She had, uh, uh, luckily, uh, luckily Father uh, Charles Hund and the janitor, James Raymond, they when it was almost too late, they found the key, or they had the keys, and they went up the fire escape from the outside and opened it, and all those kids got out. There would have been a lot more casualties if it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't for them. 
So the firefighters did a great job. They fought valiantly. They were delayed because the gate to the school was locked and all kinds of other obstacles. But when they did get there, they were finally able to start getting kids out. And of course, the the neighbors, all the even the parents were bringing ladders, uh, their own ladders to the windows. Some frightful pictures of that. A lot of uh, heroics and uh, good human nature from this story. Uh, firefighter Richard Schelt uh, was carrying John Michael Jachkowski Jr. out and uh, there was a photographer that caught the, uh, the famous image and uh, sadly, John, like many of the others, he was already dead. John Michael is uh, who we are going to visit, John Michael Jachkowski Jr., right up ahead. John was only 10 years old when he died. His uh, grave is right up here. Right by this tree. There's John. Nineteen forty eight to nineteen fifty eight. Son. He's buried next to his father, John B, who passed away in nineteen eighty nine. And uh it's blank here, so I I'm thinking the mom may still be alive, be very old, but Hopefully she's healthy. I don't know. Uh, but it's a very sad story for all the children. We pray for all the children and the, the nuns, the teachers, who I'm sure fought bravely to save those kids, sacrificing themselves in the process. So may they all rest in peace.